Hello. Apologies for not responding to comments and being away for so long. I've just been very, very busy over the past couple of months. And as a result, I haven't had much time to really write many scripts or make any videos, but I'm trying to change that bit by bit. So yeah, here's the thing with this video. Some things are almost constantly recommended to me on YouTube, and this was one of them. After seeing just how many views it had, I think it deserved a response. Now, YouTube has its fair share of enlightened centrists, but I've never heard of this particular one. To be honest, I'm glad I haven't, as he's put out other masterpieces, such as Anarcho-Capitalists and Communists Are the Same Thing. Yes. Now, I don't want to talk too much, so um, let's get started. I realized midway through making this video that um maybe didn't really deserve a response, because it's very lazily put together, but... Ah, uh, like the script is written, so I hope you enjoy this. If you're not a millennial and you're looking at this generation, there might be one thought that is particularly prevalent in your head. What's with all the communism? Right off the bat, that's a strange thing to say. Every generation has had loads of Marxists, many of which got into politics at much younger ages too, particularly in the global south. Assuming that you're referring to their presence on the internet, however, well, that just has to do with the fact that young people are more tech-savvy. And you'd probably be right to ask that. There are an awful lot of unironic communists in this generation. Thank God. And it might look a little weird from an outside perspective, a little difficult to understand, but I, as a millennial myself, do have a little bit of insight into why uh, my fellow youngsters of this day and age uh, dusting off the, the old hammer and sickle. Uh, you'll see a lot of this throughout his long video. A lot of past tense and implying antiqueness, as if it's something old and gone that somehow just picked up again after many years of it being abandoned. I don't know where you've been, but communists stuck around. Again, particularly in the global south. This isn't some idea that died and came back. This is an idea that continues to gather momentum despite numerous setbacks and all the odds stacked against it. Just to make this clear, I'm not a communist. I think communism is a terrible idea, as evidenced by, you know, every single country that's ever tried it. Should we pull out the stats? Man, I'm so tired of always having to pull out the stats. Alright then. I've covered this in another video of mine titled Socialism Gives a Better Quality of Life, which I really do need to remake since it's kind of old and the audio quality is not so good on that one, but go and see that for all the details. But I can run through this pretty quickly. Um, in the study covered by that video, it was shown that at the same level of economic development, the socialist countries showed way more favorable outcomes than the capitalist countries in all measures. The more favorable performance of the socialist countries was evident in all the comparisons that could be made. Within each level of economic development, the socialist countries had infant mortality and child death rates approximately two to three times lower than the capitalist countries. Similar relationships emerged for life expectancy. Socialist countries consistently showed higher numbers of health professionals per population than capitalist countries at equivalent levels of um, economic development. The ratio of population per physician in lower middle income and upper middle income socialist countries was similar or even higher than that of high income capitalist countries. Socialist countries consistently showed equal or higher levels of enrollment in educational institutions. Not only that, but they provided high quality educational facilities to the whole population, regardless of race, religion, language, ethnicity. To quote the article, even in the wealthier capitalist countries, public health and educational policies have not achieved equitable access for low income groups, racial minorities, and geographically isolated communities. In addition, socialist countries provided a higher daily per capita calorie supply as a percentage of requirement than did the capitalist countries at a similar level of development. Nutritional supply of all socialist countries exceeded the 100% requirement for healthy life and growth, unlike in the capitalist countries. In all three comparisons within given levels of development, socialist countries achieved a much higher physical quality of life. In every single measure, middle-income socialist countries either closely paralleled or surpassed high-income capitalist countries. If these vast differences can convince you that socialism is superior to capitalism, then you're either deluded or in denial. Socialism took Tsarist Russia, which was a semi-feudal backwater where peasants still used wooden plows, and within a few decades turned it into a nuclear-powered superpower rivaling, and in some cases far surpassing, the US and the rest of the Western world. It was the power that launched us into the space age, for God's sake. If this was your criteria for failure, then I wish there was a whole lot more of it in the world. 
Upon reviewing the evidence, it would show that socialism worked extremely well, despite all the sanctions and wars, sabotage, internal meddling, and constant threats of nuclear holocaust by the US and company. Communism has had adherents in academia long before the first communist regimes, and now, even long after the fall of the Soviet Union, they're still there. As a matter of fact, I think universities might be the workplace that has the most gainfully employed ardent communists of any workplace at all, really. Ah, uh, the old right-wing trope that somehow communists dominate academia. Despite the fact that no statistic has ever proven that, anyone who has attended a university, particularly in the West but also elsewhere, can testify to how anti-communist professors were. Undeniably, some of the greatest thinkers of the modern world have been socialists and Marxists, and hence not studying them would be a crime against humanity's knowledge, but that doesn't mean Marxism rules over universities. A much more accurate statement would be that liberals, both of the right variety and the left, quote-unquote left, dominate universities, and that would be correct. Keep in mind that Marxists aren't particularly fond of liberals, and Marxists are not liberals. Also, have you ever been to a mine, a factory, hell, even an old cubicle type office? Where there are workers, there are communists. Simple as that. I'd argue that universities have a relatively low number of Marxists as staff. By the way, if you really want to look into this further, then look up uh, the book by uh, Parenti titled Academic Repression, Reflections from the Academic Industrial Complex, and you can just see how loving universities are towards socialism. This is, of course, because things have a way of working in academia like they don't in the real world. That's why capitalism is taught at economics and business courses as a brilliant, mutually beneficial system for all, rather than how it is in the real world, an exploitative and destructive system bent on commodification of everything for further and further pursuit of profit, no matter the cost of people or the environment. And that is completely all right. I mean, after all, we pay these people to think about complex hypotheticals and uh, weird uh, mental constructs and generally just philosophy stew, and many good things come of them doing what they do. They're just not as, as, as often as readily applicable or, or as obviously applicable as uh, advances in engineering or medical science. But like engineering, occasionally, uh, the academic ideas are tested against the real world and then they result in gulags. Oh boy, here we go, the spooky word gulag. It sounds foreign and strange, so it must be evil. No, they were simply prisons where inmates did labor until their sentence was finished. Wouldn't you say that's better than having prisoners sit around wasting decades worth of tax money? It's already been proven time and time again that gulags were nothing less than prisons, with the vast majority of inmates being the usual, murderers and thieves and rapists and the like. They did labor for a maximum sentence of 10 years, were rehabilitated, and then let back into society. Even the rabid anti-communist Solzhenitsyn got complete treatment for his cancer while in these horrible gulags. Researchers like Thurston have written extensively on this topic. Hell, I'll even throw in a link where you can review dozens of sources, from even the biggest anti-communists such as Conquest, that testify against the hellhole gulag trope. The Finnish Bolshevik also has excellent videos covering how Western countries also had gulags far worse to, than the Soviet Union. Need I remind you that the US has the highest prison population in the world? Need I remind you of all the rape, humiliation, and torture that goes on in American prisons? Need I remind you of all the people thrown en masse into prisons on trumped-up charges and minor offenses, all in the interest of profit? To even make the point shows that you're either a hypocrite or ignorant. And you would expect these academics to go, well, that didn't work, and then just move on. And some did and do. But unfortunately, the same human nature that turned the Soviet Union into a cesspit of misery is holding these people back from adopting new ideas. Oh, for God's sake, when will you guys get new arguments? Really, the human nature nonsense is... I could tell you to go read Mutual Aid by Kropotkin, or really any book on anthropology, but I'll do even better. Human beings are a naturally cooperating species. That's the only way we managed to get this far. I don't think that's a particularly controversial statement to make. The only way anyone can get anywhere is through cooperation, whether you like it or not. Capitalism has existed for, at most, 400 years of human history. Primitive society, which we call primitive communism in economic terms, existed for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. You tell me, what do you really think guides human nature? A few centuries or all of human history? Also, I could mention the relationship of economic base to superstructure and talk about how people's perceptions, ideas, etc. are shaped by their socioeconomic environment, but that you can easily look up on your own. 
it's hilarious how he's saying that these imaginary academics are holding on to these outdated ideas so strongly when he himself is clinging to the weakest possible arguments that the simplest Google research would debunk. When you can construct your own world in your mind, it's easy to rationalize the shit away, right? It's you can just say, well, it, communism wasn't done right all the times it didn't work. And if it was done like exactly this way that I have in mind and just everyone stuck together and helped each other and, and you know, pulled the same way, then it would work for sure. Except there are established theories and rules that govern political economy. This isn't something people just conjure up in their mind. This is based on accumulated human experience and rigorous research. Also, another outdated and thoroughly debunked argument, the not real communism bullshit makes a showing. Lovely. The fact is that no Marxist makes these arguments. Socialism was wildly successful, even with all the odds stacked against it. To be honest, I've never met any Marxists say not real communism. I only see anti-communists pretending like some make this argument. In reality, it's usually these same anti-communists who'll say things like not real capitalism or corporatism to try and hide the fact that capitalism is a horrific system. Jesus, I'm only three minutes in. If only humanity were a little less human, then communism would work. Hence why you have a lot of academics who are communists at universities. But what the fuck does that have to do with millennials? Well, I'll tell you. Most of these millennial communists come from university academia, where communist ideology has been taught for decades. Really? Has ever seen any educational institute speak of ideology or history? It's always capitalism is amazing, communism is horrible, repeated over and over. From elementary school to the postgraduate level. Open any school history book, like a high school book for example, and you'll see the obvious obscuring of facts and the constant lying about socialism. Even I remember the nonsense they used to tell us when I was in high school, for God's sake. Also, m all communists are first world white college students is a silly and ignorant cold warrior trope that has no grounding in reality. In every generation of students, there were some that fell for it, right? Uh, they, they then became communist academics themselves and passed the torch and made sure that the teachings went on. But despite all the many, many different packagings that it has tried, communism never really caught on with the general student body. Ever heard of 1968? But now we have this sudden explosion of communists in, all over the West, in all the universities, right? Everybody's buying fucking fur hats and Kalashnikovs, if fur hats are pink hair dye and Kalashnikovs are iPhones. Ah, here's where he's going with this. Mahes JWs. Buddy, those aren't communists. Pick up a book and learn about the thing you're criticizing before you open your mouth. That way you don't come off as an arrogant and ignorant douche. They have stolen the mantle of the actually quite noble idea of social justice and turned it into full-blown fucking Marxism. Packaged as, you know, d uh, something that is generally considered to be a good thing. And, uh, well, let's just say something like that does not happen in a vacuum. No, this happened because communism hit fertile soil with the millennial generation. Communists hit fertile soil with the proletariat everywhere across all generations. Again, the fact that you don't know this shows just how little you've researched this. Were you trying to capitalize on some extra right-wing bend YouTube was on for like a month or something? Right? The limited life experience that they do have has led them to the conclusion that Marx is their best option to advance into the future. Ah, uh, the usual haha, you're just kids, you have no idea what you're talking about line. Said by those that lack the intellectual capacity to form a coherent argument. So they resort to the schoolboy-esque recess line of, well, I'm older, so I'm right. Again, actually engage with the material you're trying to criticize before talking out of your ass. It'll save you the humiliation, I promise. Oftentimes the explanation is that millennials are just spoiled and lazy, and they want the government to give them everything for free, but that's not really the true reason. Imagine, for a moment, being a millennial, right? You weren't born to rich parents because, let's be fucking honest here, few people are, right? You just have a a normal, regular, old, middle-class background. You're not super rich, but you've also never had to experience hunger. At this point, I'm assuming he's talking only about those in the West. Are you fucking thick or something? Middle class? Never experienced hunger? Have you ever looked at poverty stats in the US? The UK, even? Just because you were one of those decently well-off doesn't mean everyone is, buddy. 
You've spent all your life in a terrible school system that has taught you nothing about anything and was generally just creativity strangling conformity training, right? There's the mundane behaviors were helicoptered over and then medicated, but really nobody actually cared about you because your parents were much too busy making money so their lives wouldn't be ruined. Now he's arguing for socialism without even realizing it. Yes, alienation is a horrible thing and is a direct result of capitalism. If you want to get rid of it, you need to get rid of capitalism. Not exactly a hard concept to grasp. And now that you're fresh out of high school, you need to make an impossible financial commitment to knowing what you're going to do for the rest of your entire life. Which is something you haven't had the time to think about because you were too busy memorizing useless information in high school. Now that you've made this decision based upon your non-existent life experience, welcome to the nightmare that is High School 2.0, or as most people like to call it, college. Because no, university life is not all about frat parties and weed, bro! It's actually a lot of hard work and dedication paired with heartbreak and malnourishment. Because getting a degree, any degree, or at least most of them, has become so much tougher over the past 30 years, right? You have to put in more hours in the day of work, you have to perform to much higher levels, you have to tread lightly with what you say because of, you know, somewhat unrelated reasons, right? It's The point is, free time is generally not something that students have. It, it's just not something that happens for them. It's... it doesn't exist. But wait! There's more! If you apply to our college now, you'll also get to work at a shitty job that pays next to nothing, because that's the only way you'll be able to afford top ramen at the end of the month, so you don't fucking starve to death! Your parents can't help you, they need all their dwindling cash to make sure they have enough money for retirement, and also to ensure that the bank doesn't foreclose on their fucking house! Again, arguing for socialism. Seriously man, we're on the same page. If I repackaged some socialist rhetoric to avoid any obvious political connotations, you'd be fully on board. In fact, the vast majority of the population usually is. But instead, you're letting the ruling class do the thinking for you, telling you what to like and what to vehemently dislike, despite it being in your best interest. You can't be at uni, have a job to pay the bills, and be anything outside that. It just doesn't work. Everything pays less, everything costs more, and everything is more difficult to do. And when you leave college, you are now settled with such a monumental debt that it is so much negative money that you could buy an anti-mansion from it, right? In, in, in anti-Beverly Hills. That's how much anti-money that is. And unless you have a really rich daddy or mommy, you're not going to be starting a business. Because when you have incredible amounts of debt, you are not going to gamble on your new startup idea, no matter how fucking brilliant it is. And that angel investor that's going to save you and, you know, increase his wealth a little bit while making you fabulously rich with your hard work is not coming along. Those people do not exist. And before you go, well, you didn't have to buy that college education. You have purchased a product and now you must pay its cost. Try, try being a millennial and and getting a job that is better than Walmart without having gone to university. Try that, and then we'll talk. No, graduates have to become wage slaves because what other options do they have, really? And even that can be incredibly difficult. The days of, hey, I went to college, give me a job, are f over. It's, it doesn't, it's gone, it doesn't happen anymore. You can't live like that, right? In addition to your degree, you need years of work experience to get even an entry-level job, right? And you can't get years of experience because you can't get a job, right? And when, you could, of course, get those years of experience by working for free, which is called an internship. But really, that's only something you should do if you're willing to live on the streets and scour garbage bins for food on your free time. And even if you do get a job against all these odds, well, have fun earning about $10,000 adjusted for inflation less than people did 30 years ago with entry-level jobs. And also have fun owning about half as what baby boomers did in their early 20s. And also, you're in huge fucking debt! 
I agree with everything he's saying. It's all true, and hence why more millennials should be communists, not less. Look, the only reason things were better for baby boomers was because Europe was destroyed post-war, and the US had free reign to capitalize on those destroyed markets. Along with the fact that there was a massive and modern socialist superpower right next door that provided their citizens with practically everything they would need, plus quote-unquote luxuries such as completely free education on all levels, excellent universal healthcare, cultural houses and festivals, a strong sense of belonging, and so much more. The US knew it needed to compete in order to not lose. For the communists, providing all this was a must for human happiness. For the capitalists, it was an unpleasant necessity in order to protect their interests. Once the USSR was illegally dissolved, the capitalists realized they didn't need to do this anymore, and then came the crippling austerity, then came the horrifying debt, plummeting social services, and shitty pay. If you can even find employment, that is. Even though you work more hours, there is no job security. You'll never be able to, to buy a house or <laughs> retire. That's, that's not an option that's ever going to be on the table for you, right? Because the meager earnings that you do get, you have to spend those on staying alive and paying your debts. There's nothing else. There just isn't anything else you can do with it. Basically, you're looking at a life of modern day slavery, which was sold to you as, well, you're the, you have the freedom to do whatever you, you want. So long as you do one, one of these few things that you can actually realistically do in the system that we have pushed you into, right? Can you not understand that some millennials would just go, yeah, uh, no? This is why millennials are turning to Marx for answers. This is why all of humanity has, across every single culture, nationality, and religion, turned to Marx at one point or another. That's because his analysis is the most profound and his solutions make the most sense. No one would ever believe in trickle-down economics and other sort of nonsense when they've read even the simplest of Marx's works because Marx breaks all of these illusions. They have borne the brunt of the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. And yes, many people lost many things, but millennials in general just lost their entire future. That's what they paid for, even though they had nothing to do with creating this crisis. And the next crisis is just around the corner because governments are bought and paid for by banks. Or exactly. The boom and bust cycles are an inherent part of capitalism. If you want to end these horrific depressions that ruin millions of people's lives every few years, you need to end capitalism. There isn't any way of getting around it. Also, the overpriced education they got is worth nothing. But also, it's not optional. They see that all this great economic growth that's happened over the past few decades, it's all gone to the top 5% of people. The, the rest of them got, got scraps, right? The middle class, where their parents come from, the life they'll never have, it's disappearing, and it's not disappearing upward. That's not what's happening. And they also see that none of this is going to change. Because the older generations just go, yeah, this is, uh, this is completely okay. I'll be dead soon anyway, so what do I care? I have money. So millennials think to themselves, hey, how about instead of me being a slave to this system I did not create, I try building this utopia I found in a book. Oh geez, and we're back to this nonsense. First of all, Read Socialism, Utopian, and Scientific by Engels to clear this up. Marx and Engels spent their lives differentiating themselves from utopian socialists, so read what they have said. To claim that Marx advocates for a utopian world is beyond ridiculous. Do your research, people. For the millionth time, if you're going to criticize something, learn what the thing is first. I promise you, just look into Marx's works. He makes a lot of sense. He's not some spooky boogeyman, all right? He's just a guy who tried to analyze capitalism and his analysis proved to be incredibly profound. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. I have never experienced any of it. They don't know about the horrors of communism. Like free, excellent quality education, universal healthcare, housing, zero homelessness, zero unemployment, 100% literacy rates, the breaking of barriers between different races and religions, economic and employment security, early retirement with full pensions, a strong and organized country to be proud of, immense public infrastructure spending, the elimination of famines that were endemic to those regions of the world, full public representation or direct participation in the political process, democratically governing their own workplaces, full ability to persecute corrupt managers or bosses or overseers, and so, so much more. 
They've never had to live under its oppressive thumb. They weren't alive back then. And neither were you, so stop talking out of your ass. People who did, though, all want it back. Sure, they learned about the horrors that the right wing committed, because Nazis are fairly present in high school education, but day-to-day -day life in the Soviet Union isn't really a major part of the educational curriculum in the West. And Maybe it wasn't in yours, it was wholly present in mine. I went and asked a few people I know from Germany, Sweden, France, the US, Italy, Jordan, Japan, and Mexico, and every single one of them told me they were thoroughly taught about the quote-unquote horrors of communism. The ruling class is very interested in making socialism look like an evil thing because it is the only thing that challenges their power. That's why liberals across every time period have sided with fascists against communists. They know. Just because you don't doesn't change the fact. Need I remind you that the whole Third Reich happened because of the Great Depression, right? Germany was in, in shambles following Black Friday and, and all that accompanied that whole debacle, right? That, that's how the, the Nazis could sell, sell the Germans on the Jews being the problem because of all the banker Jews. As Lenin said, fascism is capitalism in decay. When the capitalists can't keep their power through covert liberal and pseudo-democratic means, they resort to fascism. That's why behind Mussolini and Hitler were the largest industrialists of Italy and Germany. The Nazi ideology was just in the right place at the right time, much like communism is today with social justice and helping the poor. So is this a thinly veiled attempt at that horseshoe nonsense? Fascism wasn't at the right place at the right time. It was a carefully planned response to the heightened level of class struggle in Europe after World War I. By his logic of social justice and helping the poor, communism would then be right for every single population at every single point in time, which is pretty much true. Really, they're a bit like reluctant Trump supporters, right? They, they thought, well, I could vote for this corporate shit candidate that is literally the worst person to live in this day and age in America. Trump was no worse than Obama or Bush. He was just not as well spoken as Obama. Otherwise, the wars, the tax cuts to the rich, the drone strikes, declining quality of infrastructure and healthcare and education and every other failure of capitalism in America continues as ever. Or I could go with the wild card who could either be the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. So why not, why not go out swinging instead of taking it up the ass, right? And also much like a these reluctant Trump supporters, or at least many of them, um, they have fallen victim to the Ben Franklin effect, where they eventually started thinking that because they decided for this system, it has to be the best, most flawless system ever to exist in all of history, and any, anything that attacks it is fundamentally evil and the opposite of good. If you don't like the rules, change the game. And if we don't fix the aforementioned problems, because do understand that these are the problems that are making communism happen in the West. Well, the same thing that happened with the Nazis might happen again, only with the communists. What? Is he saying mass extermination of whole populations? This is a ridiculous point that makes very little sense. And please know this. If they win this time, they will win for good. You can no longer go into the woods and build some sort of secret resistance. It doesn't work. They have fucking drones with thermal vision. You can't do it. They will win for good. Resistance is never outdated. There will always be ways to fight the power, so to speak. That's how even now there are guerrilla bands and people's armies throughout the third world fighting for the liberation of their people. Either way, those former capitalists, landowners, and fascists, the usual groups, as shown by history, that fight socialism in order to regain the power to oppress, deserve whatever comes to them. It was that very same oppression of capitalists and landowners and fascists by the USSR that prevented the fifth column within the Soviet Union from destroying the country and allowing the Nazis to roll right in like the fifth columns throughout Europe, for example France, had done. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you got a little bit of insight into the millennial mindset. I really do, because I need people to understand this. I need people to understand that this isn't just something that came out of nowhere. This is something that came from very real things and very real problems that millennials have, right? You can't tell a millennial, well, I had it worse in my day, because first of all, that's not fucking true. 
And second of all, the fact that, you, that we have iPhones doesn't mean our lives are not shit. Because iPhones do not make you happy. Also, I don't, I don't even have an iPhone. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an Android user, so that's probably why, why I'll have all the downvotes at the, at the video bottom. That they will, they will be there. Because, because, of, because of my Android usage. Yeah, not because of the extreme ideology. Ideology, 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 ideology. And that's that. A pointless video that in the end manages to pretty convincingly argue for socialism, mixed in with typical anti communist tropes that hold no weight. So in the end, I'm glad this video got nearly 400,000 views. You did a good job, comrade. Again, I'm, I'm sorry for being so bad with putting out videos and not responding to comments and all that stuff. I've just been very, very busy. Um, I'll see if I'll have time to make more videos. I always want to make more videos, but I'll see if I have um, more time in the near future. And uh, Oh, and if you want to talk to me sometime or just catch me in some voice chat or something, then I am on the Finnish Bolsheviks Discord server. I do come on every once in a while, so uh, get on that. <laughs> and that's it. I'll see you guys later.